Dragon Lord Origin Explored Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles The king of all dragons and foe of the turtles is the Dragon Lord, who is also known as Dragon Lord and Dragon Skull. This character was developed specifically for the live-action television series Ninja Turtles, The Next Mutation. Let us find out more about Dragon Lord in our video today. The dragons who were exiled to another dimension about 15,000 years ago are ruled by the Dragon Lord. He had risen to take what was once his when dragons controlled the globe. He managed to escape from the magical glass where he and his army of rank were imprisoned. After being set free, he and his horde set out to rule the world, which led to clashes with the turtles. We're having turtle soup tonight! <laughs> He wants to eliminate the turtles first to carry out his schemes unhindered. He expands his headquarters there in New York. The Dragon Lord is still awed by simple things like broomsticks and doesn't fully comprehend several wonders of the outer world. He is astounded to see turtles strolling around and desires to ingest the same substances that turned them into mutants. He expects that doing so will endow him with superhuman strength. Even the slightest actions such as being corrected can easily set him off. He has Dr. Quis, a mad scientist by his side, as an ally and intends to use his knowledge for his own ends. Wick, the tiny dragon, serves as his buddy. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. So, I am the Dragon Lord. How do you fit that on a business card? Dark Origin of Dragon Lord Explored The episode starts and we are taken to Chung the First's residence in China. Because he hasn't spoken, eaten, or moved in days, his student is concerned. She is informed by Chung the First that he is keeping an eye on the glass in front of him and that he will now sip some tea. His disciple walks away and then a face appears in the mirror. Raphael receives a warning from Leonardo in New York for putting the entire gang at risk. He rides his bike to let off steam when a bunch of foot ninja t attacks him. Raphael takes them to a factory where a brawl breaks out. When Splinter notices that Ralph is struggling while they are playing chess in Central Park, he leaves the game and goes to help. Donatello employs his satellite system at the lair to learn that Raph is in difficulty. The turtles drive off in their Humvee. Just when Raph is about to be defeated by the foot, Splinter arrives and beats them. Raph receives a lecture from Splinter about riding a noisy motorcycle, and the turtles as a whole about behaving erratically. Shredder is upset to learn that Splinter and the turtles have once again defeated his foot soldiers from somewhere in New York. He orders them to use every strategy at their disposal to defeat the turtles. Now go! Prove yourselves! Destroy the freaks. Splinter meditates at his lair, allowing his spirit to drift into dreamland. Splinter is informed by Chung the First that the Realm of Illusions is no longer secure and the dragons are approaching. Splinter discusses his rage with Raph after turning his attention back to the outside world. Things are escalating in China. Chung believes it is time to educate his apprentice about the glass. The Earth was dominated by dragons thousands of years ago. The dragons were imprisoned in the glass by Chung's forefathers. The dragons intend to retake the planet after discovering a route into the realm of dreams through Chung's mind. Michelangelo decides to drive his go-kart through the sewers in the meantime. When the foot sees him, they pursue him to their lair. Just when the foot starts to attack, Michelangelo bursts through the wall. Splinter is also present after finally returning to the realm of dreams. Splinter has been held prisoner by a new monster that has taken over the realm. When Chung tries to save Splinter, the face in a mirror attacks him. After the foot gets defeated, the turtles discover Splinter is not acting right. To save Splinter, Chung in China instructs his students to travel to New York. She lifts her hood and shows herself to the Mei Pei Chi, another mutant turtle, as she pledges to follow orders. I don't. The second episode starts right where it left at the end of the first episode. Splinter's inability to awaken causes concern among the turtles. The electricity goes out just as they are ready to see a doctor. The turtles are discovered dangling by their feet when the power comes back. A robed figure approaches Splinter and informs them that the dragons have imprisoned him in the world of dreams. Mei Pei Chi is revealed when she removes the hood. She let the lads down before, telling them that she had been discovered in a Chinatown drainage ditch. Chung discovered her there and brought her to China because he thought she was lucky. 
Chung taught her the internal arts when it became clear that she had mutant talents. The dragons had been trapped in a looking glass that Chung had been gazing over, but they had discovered their path to the realm of dreams. They had captured Splinter as a prisoner. Shredder rants at a few of his thugs in the Foot's headquarters for failing him once more. He instructs them to assemble the Foot clan, and tonight they will collectively annihilate the turtles. Michelangelo, Raphael, and Donatello talk about May back in the sewers. Topside, Leonardo is chatting with May. He clarifies that neither of them is a blood relative. May visits the dream world while they return to the sewer. Splinter is persuaded to join them by Dragonlord. As soon as May is discovered, she flees. May chooses to take a walk at night in the park since she wants a respite from the lads. Some of the foot ninjas assault her while she is walking. After chatting about her, the guys in the sewers decide to dispatch Raphael to keep an eye on May. By the time he arrives, she has already taken good care of them. She discovers that the foot intended to strike their sewers again the same night by reading one of the ninjas' minds. Your enemies are planning a second attack. In your toilet tonight. Let's sewer. On his way back to the sewer, Michelangelo finds a statue that serves as his inspiration for giving May her new moniker, Venus Di Milo. They learn about the assault from Venus. She claims that they need to train to dreamwalk, but that they are unable to do so while the foot is around. This leads her to suggest getting rid of the foot. The turtles break into the Foot Clan's administrative center, where all of the foot are present. The turtles enter the stage as Shredder greets the foot. There are too many turtles to combat the foot effectively. Venus is able to bring Orokusaki right to the surface and take down the Shredder using her skills. The Foot Clan, according to Leonardo, has been destroyed. The turtles plan to have a celebration at Central Park after rescuing Splinter. The Dragon Lord, however, has traversed their dimension and sought safety in a storage facility. After that, he goes looking for the turtles in the park because he thinks eating them will make them stronger. The fourth episode starts where we can see the Dragon Lord sending Wick and a few ranked dragons into the city to obtain the rare components necessary to create the antiquated serum of invincibility. This old-fashioned serum would help them to acquire an advantage over the turtles. The rank's newly invincible warriors will undoubtedly defeat the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles once they consume them. Donatello follows a bunch of dragons right into Chinatown, employing his turtle-fied eye in the sky satellite. The turtles do not actually engage in combat with their foes, since Splinter thinks they should be on the defense rather than the offense. The sensei does this in an effort to identify a vulnerability in the strong adversaries. Raphael, on the other hand, disagrees and decides to go to Chinatown all by himself in order to punch Wick and Dragon in the butt, but instead finds himself in need of dire help from his buddies. The Dragon Lord's objective was to transform all his accomplices into super soldiers. Unfortunately, this objective fell far short of his ability to collect enough components to manufacture the serum for more than six warriors. The rare components that Dragon Lord needs to come from the ground up bones of some of the planet's most threatened animals, so he dispatches another squad of the rank all the way to the Bronx Zoo. Thankfully, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles are there to stop the dragons. One of the ranks consumes a single dose of the Serum of Invincibility during the battle, and displays nearly invincible strength up until he escapes in fear. The Dragon Lord swears to continue his search for the materials to render all of his soldiers invulnerable, even after the turtles prevail in the battle at the zoo. The fifth episode begins with the Dragon Lord intending to construct a snare for the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles by deploying his five deadliest rank all the way to the Bronx Zoo for an assault after realizing that the turtles intuitively know his soldiers' every move. The evil reptile uses the final five dosages of the Serum of Invincibility to increase the fearsome strength of his soldiers. The turtles, however, are understandably outraged when they test a specimen of the serum from their recent fight with the rank and find that it is made of pulverized tiger bone, rhino horn, and turtle shell. The following altercation at the Bronx Zoo is a real-life death struggle that is protracted and violent because both sides are pumped up. As the conflict progresses, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles realize that the serum is simply a placebo. Having no genuine invincibility ability other than to enable the user to imagine that he is invincible, and therefore overcome his anxieties. With this information, the Turtles deliver a devastating defeat to the Dragon Lord along with his henchmen. Additionally, the long brewing disagreements between Raphael and Leonardo come to a head, as the Turtles come to the realization that while their idiosyncrasies make them unique, they also make them the same, like parts of a single puzzle, and more so. As they are turtles, they are part of a prehistoric fabric of life, 
of a pedigree reaching back to the era of the dinosaurs. Turtles are above all survivors, and survival itself is a great teacher. The Staff of Bukai is the sixth episode of the series, where we can see that the Staff of Bukai is taken from an older man by the Dragon Lord as he reaches back in time. Raphael is having a rage tantrum in the sewer lair, but Venus soon puts an end to it by using her chi powers to dupe him into submission. The magician is destroyed by using the staff to return a magic user spell. The Dragon Lord dispatches the rank along with the staff to find Venus and annihilate her. On the other hand, Raphael and Master Splinter were talking about Raphael's latest diversion, aka Venus, when the rank came across them in the sewer. Splinter instructs Raphael to seek assistance before taking down the rank gang, who flee to another area of the sewers. It's you and me! Green time! No, Raphael! Take the passage to the south! I can handle them! What? Venus surrounded the radio-controlled airplanes that Donatello had built in the lair with Chi magic in order to turn them into self-flying aircraft. The turtles enter the sewers and use their airplanes to attack the rank when the rank triggers Donatello's motion detectors, which causes the rank to flee from the mechanical birds. The rank returns to the Dragon Lord in one of the aircraft. Dragon Lord himself walks to the streets and utilizing staff of Bukai and the Chi power around the airplane, draws Venus to him in response to the rank's failure. To assist her, the turtles follow after. Dragon Lord wields the staff while Venus performs her magic. Venus does not destroy him. Instead, she reflects the force of the staff back at him. The Dragon Lord sends it back in time since he is unhappy with the consequences of the staff. Cancellation of the Ninja Turtles, the next mutation. Ninja Turtles the next mutation was cancelled while Dragon Lord remained at large. The end of the conflict was eventually revealed in an unorthodox fashion when it was relayed to readers through the Turtle Tracks letter page on the official website. The summertime of 1998 saw the cancellation of this series. Since the animated show's 1987 premiere, the Turtles have never been off television screens for an extended length of time before the show's termination. In 2003, a brand new animated series would finally premiere. Fox decided against continuing to invest money in the show's production because the ratings were not high enough. Since they did not own the Ninja Turtles, Fox did not make as much money from broadcasting it as they would have if they had owned it. The Genghis Khan of The Next Mutation. One of the series' main antagonists is the Dragon Lord, who is played by Gerald Wong and voiced by Christopher Gaze. The first wicked dragon, Dragon Lord, attracted other dragons to join him because of his charisma, which led to the expulsion of his whole race. He has a dictatorial mentality, but he also lacks an understanding of contemporary culture and technology. For example, he has no idea what radio or, for that matter, clones are. When Wick fails at chores or momentarily assumes the throne of king, Dragon Lord is shown to be merciful, although he still displays no pity for failure or traitors. With a ponytail and a scarlet coat, Dragon Lord indeed possesses a Genghis Khan-like appearance. His major objective is to consume the turtles because he thinks doing so will transform him into an all-powerful dragon deity. His rapid reactions and sense of humor stand out the most in contrast to his nasty attitude. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks, everyone. Ah! A picnic in the park. What a charming.